The following production is brought to you by the Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. Talking Buds Leaf Show, Leafs Panthers Game Four Post Game Edition, and we and a lot of other shows and people were ready to read the eulogy going into this game, and the Maple Leafs stave off elimination with a two-one victory over the Florida Panthers. They say the fourth one is the hardest one to get. That's the cle- How many times listening to sports radio in this city have you heard that saying over the last couple of days? Because for me, it's been endless. Yeah, you told me. You you warned me not to read the eulogy and uh, not kind of get into that sort of episode where you start absolutely spazzing but I, I just couldn't help myself the other night I was just so angry I was so pissed off after that game three and I almost knew they were gonna win tonight um because just why wouldn't they and now I'm just on here and I really have like I, I don't I don't know like I, I'm getting texts of like the the Lloyd Christmas yeah, I got memes, I got the Lloyd you know? Christmas like, I'm meme getting the too. Lloyd Christmas memes I'm getting the people who are just like, oh, whatever. It's just prolong the inevitable inevitable for one more game. So I I don't know, man. Well, I think with something like this, you you that win you hope starts the beginning of planting the seed of doubt in the Florida Panthers' heads. And I think I thought as a whole tonight, they were they were okay. I didn't think they they were great. I thought William Nylander was excellent. I thought Joe Wall was excellent. And I thought some of their defense, Luke Shen in particular, the Shen-Riley pairing was very good tonight as well. John Tavares was very good tonight as well. And it's it, it you, you hope to use it as like a building block to keep going. I mean, the next one, they're coming home for game five. They have been brutal in this postseason at home. So that's going to be a challenge in and of itself. But... Yeah, it's 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 a stepping stone, and, and you hope that it's it's the plant that it grow. That's the seed of doubt that you're putting in the Florida Panthers' heads. It was kind of a boring hockey game. Yeah, you, well, that's they needed. Yeah, I, they kind of yeah, needed like, that. There's nothing wrong with that, but it was just there was like ten minutes left. It's like it's one nothing right now. This is this is strange. The one thing I thought that was the most noticeable tonight was I just thought they they really made an effort to block shots and to clog up the middle of the ice to take away second chances from the Florida Panthers. That, that's the number one thing I noticed tonight that they did a really good job of. I would say they also got more traffic in front of Sergei Bobrovsky than they had previously. He looks really good though, man. Yeah, he does. He looks dialed. He, he does look dialed. really good. Like if you, if you have a one-on-one shot against him right now, it's, it's probably not going in because he looks, see, he attacks you and he looks Damn good. This isn't meant to be a a dunk on on Elias Samsonov, because love Sammy and he he earned their number one spot thus far this season. But there's something about Joe Wall's demeanor and body language in the net. He reminds me a, a bit of Freddie like that, where there, there's a there's a calmness that he has in the position, whereas Samsonov I find gets gets very swimmy, especially under pressure. And I think that's one of the reasons why everyone likes Joe Wall so much is, is he sort of exudes this calm confidence that I think a lot of teams need from their goalie. I think people like Joe Wall, too, because it's just the story. Like, just why wouldn't you want this guy to do well? Like, after game three, I I, I said to everybody, it's like, I don't know if I'd like anybody on this team right now, but how how can you not root for a guy like Joe Wall who's 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 a goalie they brought up in their system who seems like a really good guy he seems like a pretty good goalie you know like why why wouldn't you want him to do well especially in this market where you're just like starving for a a goaltender that's a no-brainer to put in your net I was just gonna say that they see I didn't cut you off there we have the Ryanites in the comments who are mad at me they say I interrupt you constantly so, 
the Ryanites yeah. have spoken, <laughs> and I am not going to interrupt you. I don't. I don't feel that you interrupt me that much. No, I just get fired up. Yeah, that's, that's part of the dynamic. But pretty good. I think we're a pretty like undefeated, like give or take, give and take podcast. Yeah, yeah. We're we're we know we got we got we got the pulse. Anyways, you took the you took the words out of my mouth there. It's 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 a home grown developed goaltender that this organization has not had in a literal lifetime. So yeah, you're right. It's the story around Joe Wall that I think people get really excited about. Mitch Marner gets the winning goal tonight. I hope that this is the beginning of him getting some of his confidence back and sort of shedding this I don't know. This like dark cloud that's kind of followed him around in the playoffs. Like you you were joking tonight about how many times in the last couple of days on sports radio you heard the well, Marner hasn't scored a goal outside of the first couple of games in a series. Just the core four. Yeah. If I oh my, if I hear that one more time, like well, we I, get it. Stop calling them that. So, Stop. So we had a we had a ton of so annoying. We had a ton of engagement on. I I shared the clip of us talking about the culture on our TikTok. We had that was by far. We've never had a video that's blown up like that. And the comments on it are all over the place, from people agreeing with us to disagreeing with us, to saying we're too hard on too hard on them, to we're not hard enough on them. So we're pigeons, like couch coaches, like all all across the board. And then, so I've been thinking a lot about those comments and how I feel culture wise. And then Marner comes out yesterday and makes the comment about the media, and he says, "We don't listen to the media, like we didn't like." Basically, it's like, we don't let what you guys say affect us in this room, was essentially what he said. And, like, really, like, villainizing the media, and a couple people, myself included, didn't like the comments, and were very much like, oh, here you go, like, you're focused on the media, you're not focused on the Florida Panthers. I thought he and Matthews were were fine tonight. To me, they look like a couple of guys who are just so in their own heads, and when you combine that observation with the comments that Mitch Marner made, I just get the sense that these are two guys that are literally, they they are reading. Because you don't, he's not saying that about, Mitch Marner is not listening to our podcast or anyone's podcast. He's not reading articles. He's not turning the radio on. He's not watching the pregame show. So those comments are about fans, in my opinion. And... Is this a guy who is 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 reading things online? Are he and Matthews reading things online and it's getting in their heads a little bit? Like, is that I just I just watch them. Matthews in particular tonight. Like he just he's he's over he's overcomplicating everything. Like it's like it gets on his stick, he makes one move too many. It's just they just look like two guys who are in their heads. So this is an extremely long-winded way of saying, I really hope Marner scoring that goal kind of like Move, rise above that, dude. Like, you think Sidney Crosby reads shit that's being said about him online? No. Yeah, I mean, there, there's just that narrative that's been following them. But, I mean, just, like, just to have an honest conversation with a very talented hockey player who, during the regular season, is, even though he hasn't had 100 points, but he's a 90-plus point guy a year, and he's considered one of the most top 10 skilled hockey players in the league who creates a lot of offense. And I just want to look at him and just have a, a man to man with him and be like, doesn't it just piss you off watching Joe Pavelski have six goals in the playoffs right now? Who's also an undersized guy, but also, but just finds a way to get it done. Doesn't it piss you off watching Leon Dreisaitl put on an absolute show almost every night in the playoffs? Like, doesn't that piss you off? Like screw the fan base, screw the media. Just like, if you consider yourself such a top player in this league and such a skilled guy, like everyone thinks of you as, like doesn't that piss you off? Doesn't it get you motivated that you're the you're the guy who just doesn't produce offense? Like, yeah, I get it. The game gets tight, and and the checking gets tighter. But all these other players who are who are top guys are finding a way to get it done, and it's just like just doesn't that hurt your ego a little bit? Doesn't that motivate you? Yeah, I mean, if you want to be a top guy, you want to be a top dog. Like, if you want to be considered a, a a goat in this league, like, 
Buddy, look, 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 look around the playoffs. There's a lot of guys giving incredible yeah, and, performances. And, yeah, and I just gave the Sid the Sid example, but it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think McDavid or Drysaitel are reading what people are saying about them. I just and and what are, people can't say anything about them because of how they're playing. He he took a couple of punches, Marner. That is took a couple punches to the face at the end there with Matthew Kachuk trying to get him going, and he he didn't bite. But like that's the kind of stuff that it's like. He's trying to get you off your game. He didn't bite. Like, just this all. Those are two former London Knight teammates. Yeah, but but that but that just goes to show you the gamesmanship of Matthew. He doesn't care. I mean, I don't I don't expect again. Like, if if Mitch Marner doesn't want to get involved in punching people, that, that that's not that's fine. I don't care about. Oh that. yeah, no, like, no, I don't think he's gonna do that. Yeah, could Chuck was just being just trying to get in his head and just like that was the only man left. And seeing Martyr in that position was kind of weird because you never see him in that position. But it's just, just go out and be a goat, man. Like just go out and just be one of those legends who show who's a skilled player just shows up. Like look at Patrick Kane in those cup runs, like. Is there a player more similar to Marner than Patrick Kane? Like they're almost the same player, and look how legendary that guy's performances was for for three cup runs. Like, don't you want to be that? Don't you don't you want to go down at the end of your career with that as your reputation? Like that that's a thing I would just say if I was just talking mano a mano. Like you know, like yeah. No, the point I was trying to make with the Kachuk thing was it's like that's the kind of stuff that like. It, Come on, like snap out of it. Stop worrying about what people are saying on Twitter or in your Instagram mentions. Just focus on that. He's focused. You're focused. Got the big goal tonight. Build off that. It's that simple. Yeah, I don't know if he will though. They just gotta get out of their heads, man. Like I don't want to be a broken record here, but it's like you guys are so like you're you're like when you guys are on your top ten players in the league. It's like stop stop. Stick hand like they just come over the the Panthers blue line and it's just like Matthew stops moving his feet and he's like looking around trying to make some play. It's like, dude, throw it at the net, man. Like you guys, I heard Kevin Weeks on the radio this afternoon when I was driving home and he's just like, shoot it from the bench, shoot it from the dressing room. Like every puck that comes up, you just like, shoot it. Like you gotta you gotta score on this guy, right? It's like that that has to be your mentality. So good things tonight. It's something to build off of. I'm I'm glad we didn't go we didn't read the full you we came we came pretty close to reading the full eulogy the other night we didn't end up doing that coming back to Toronto for Game Five yeah I mean I I really I I, I don't know like I wasn't I'm gonna be honest like I wasn't totally invested in watching this game tonight like I just. I, I I mean, it is pretty leafy for them not to get swept and for them to come back and make a series out of it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what else to expect. To me, it's just like it's time to prove it. I mean, if you if, if at the end of this, I have to come on here and look like a complete idiot for absolutely spazzing after a game three loss, then I'm fine doing that. Well, we we were two of many people who spaz after game three. And I am I'll fully admit right now, like I I will gladly they somehow pull a rabbit out of a hat here. I will gladly sit here and and eat crow and gladly. I, and everyone who who comments on our videos or TikToks saying you guys are being too negative, I'll, I'm going to give you a, just a pat on the back for staying positive because I'm just not that strong and I I, I broke down completely. And you know what? that's uh, good self awareness. Other Ryan. than s- saying fire, I, the only thing I didn't say after that episode, that during that episode was fire the general manager. That was coming next. So it's just, I don't know. Well, like, but like, what happens if they like? Let's just say that they they come back, they lose in six, they lose in seven. Like, like then what? It's I like think, I think I think I think the game. So I, I'm glad you brought that up because. Everyone, a lot of people like to point to William Nylander as the guy that they should move off of if they decide to do that this offseason. But I'm sorry. Like, you, he he had it from the from the word go tonight. And I just don't, I, I don't agree with him. I understand he has the most movable contract, and that's why a lot of people circle him. But I just, I don't know. Like, if they come back and make a series out of it, then you got to tip their cap to them for not not giving up and and pushing this as far as they can go. But I don't think that changes the fact. I think it, it may prevent people in the front office from getting fired. I don't think that there's a scenario here, barring them winning this series and and going on a run 
and winning the Stanley Cup. I don't think there's a scenario here where you can look at this and go, this team comes back completely as is next year. I think however long you 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 stay alive, whether that's coming back and winning this series, pushing to seven or, seven or whatever, I think that changes the severity. I think it moves you further away from scorched earth. Yeah, like that's that's what I'm kind of worried about. It's like... I mean, like, what is scorched? Like, yeah, we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but it's well, scorched earth is your ever. Shani, Dubas, and Keith are all fired. Somebody comes in and they start dismantling the core. That's that's scorched earth. Yeah, like, what's dismantling the core? Is trading it, one or two but, but of the core what? guys for what? That's what I'm saying. That's and well, but Ryan, you're asking the million dollar question, and like again, we, this now is not the appropriate time. Yeah, to get I know, into this. I know. but like. I, that's the million dollar question. It's like you, there's no scenario where you trade a Mitch Marner as much as we've all been frustrated. Like me chief among, among us who have been frustrated with him during this playoff run at times, there's no scenario where you trade a Mitch Marner and win that trade. So it actually, it's like, that's why you, we all should hope for them to come back here. And, Cause that's, that's what they should be doing. The reason why you're so mad the other night is because you're like, you guys are like, this is, this is unacceptable. Like this team is better than this. Like you watch how you guys perform in the regular season. And you know what? We have criticized them and lots of other people and said, you know, they got outworked um, by Tampa in the first round, but they found ways to win. And that's what good teams do. And so realistically, it's like, we shouldn't be looking at them coming back here and going, Oh, it's just prolonging the inevitable. It's like, no, like you guys, Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner are elite top 10 players in this league. And they should be able to lift their team to, a better result than getting swept by the Florida Panthers. No offense to the Florida Panthers because their fans, oh my God, most in, intense fan base we've ever dealt with. And it's not even close. Well, big things, uh, common small packages. So, I mean, that was extremely profound. Yeah. Very angry fans because there's only a hundred of them. So, oh, oh, geez. Oh, look out. Yeah. They already clipped you and came yeah. after you once. Yeah. They're going to yeah. come after you again. Well, I mean, when yeah. you're a small fan base, you get oh, very insecure. Boy. It's like having oh, boy. small body parts. Like, oh, it just that's what happens no. when, when you get insecure. You start you start getting mad at people and oh, no. and you start getting very defensive. You're, you're, I don't get defensive. I don't know who the bigger heel is in the state of Florida right now. Sid Sixero, Sam McKee, or you? I, I I don't like whenever someone comments on a video being like you Leaf fan. Like, does that ever bother me? Or like, someone could say anything they want about the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care. But you just you throw a little cheap shot at a small meaningless fan base and they all just want to come after you. And oh, just... and they come, they come and draw. I've been genuinely surprised at how aggressive the Panther fans are. They are aggressive. Like, like some of them aren't even like, I feel like some of them aren't even Panther fans. I feel like people just hate this franchise oh, yeah. so oh, much. 100%. That it's just it like. It is definitely, it is definitely Leaf haters. I will well. say there's probably a couple diehard Panther fans out there. And you know what? Good for you. Like that, that I'm happy you've stuck with your team. I'm whatever. But I just know it's not even you I'm mad at. If you love the Panthers so much and you want to come after me, like that's fine. If you strap in for at least 70 a year with the Florida Panthers and you do a talking Panthers podcast, like good for you, man. But it, I know there's some of those people are just like those two goofs you see in the stands in the ACC or just wearing the opposing team's sweater that every game, like I know some of those people coming after me are just the most intense leaf haters of all time and yeah. have nothing to do with the Florida Panthers. So if they're going to win game five, I think continue to do what they did tonight, which is collapse in front of wall and protect him and block shots. I'm and, cheering for Joe wall. You yeah, know what? That that's a story. As mad as I was, everyone else, I'm cheering for Joe wall. Yep. And that's a story. And I would just like to see Austin Matthews. I want Marner to build off scoring his big goal tonight. And I would like to see Matthews, like get back to being Austin Matthews. Stop thinking. It's like what I'm, I'm going to, Use another Top Gun rap, Top Gun reference. He goes, 
You think up there, you're dead. And Austin Matthews is thinking way too much when he's out there. Just, dude, you're top five player in this league when you're locked in. Stop worrying about stick handling. Move your feet. Joseph Wall is the first Toronto Maple Leaf goaltender to win a second round game since. Eddie Belfour. Boom. Yep. There you go. Pretty impressive. Franchise, baby. All right. We're going to get out of here. We will be back. So game five goes Friday night. We will be back Saturday morning with our game five post game show. If you don't want to miss that, hit that like and subscribe button below. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Do the same if you're listening to the audio version. Batten down the hatches because the Panther fans are coming for your head once again. And we'll see you guys after game five.